pasó que... Nada, voy a comenzar. <clears throat> so, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steven Palmer Velasquez. Um, before we start, I want to thank you for being here. Today, I will be talking about improving project outcomes, green belt and yellow belt Lean Six Sigma tools for optimal results. <clears throat> so the agenda for today's presentation, I will be telling you about a little bit of myself, not much because I don't like to talk to talk about myself. Um, then I will be embarking on a technical discussion covering the topics of six, uh, the core principle of Six Sigma fundamentals, providing a comparison of Lean methodology versus Six Sigma methodology, and introducing the backbone of the Six Sigma uh, DMIC method, methodology, and diving in deep into the defined phase. Uh, lastly, we will we will be finishing off with an overview of the presentations to come and a question segment. Let me just a moment here, okay? Well, uh, starting starting with the about me seg segment, uh, my name is Steven Palmer Velasquez. As I mentioned, I work under the supervision of Dr. Samuel Hernandez. And well, my core my core values are centered around family and loyalty. Uh, I got my education from my my bachelor my bachelor's degree in chemistry from the Pontificial University uh, Catholic University of Puerto Rico in Ponce, and then and then continued to my masters at the University of Mayagüez or Puerto Rico Mayagüez present uh, present. I'm currently doing my master in physical chemistry, as I mentioned before, with the with Dr. Hernandez, and I'm working on um, and I'm working on a thesis on cleaning validation on cleaning validation methods, method uh, developing a cleaning validation methodology. So my work experience is mostly based based on on being a researcher uh, in the University of of um, the Pontificial University of Puerto Rico, I I've done research on developing developing uh, quantum dots structures to degrade uh, contaminants in water. Uh, then I was uh, when I entered to my masters, I started as a laboratory instructor. And then if, um, when I joined with Dr. Hernandez, I became a lab associate where I'm currently working as a, a today. And I had some experience in as a quality assurance co-op at AV Pharma Lab. Well, some fun facts about me. I miss living because I have a newborn. And recently, just and yesterday, I got my Greenberg certification. And today I'm doing a presentation about it. So this is my certificate. Uh, it, it mentioned is uh, it mentioned that I fully completed the Six Sigma course and currently a Green Belt certificate. So continuing, continuing, I want to explain what our role as a Green Belt is. So Green Green Belts are the let me put my pointer. So Green Belts are like the working bees of the Six Sigma hierarchy structure. We, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, let me have a sip of water. <clears throat> so as I was mentioning, green belts are the working bees of the Six Sigma hierarchy. We currently sit above yellow belts and below black belts, meaning that we have a great understanding of Lean Six Sigma and the, and a good understanding, a mastery of the tools and methodologies like DMAC, DMIC and Lean Principle Applications. So, so above us are the black belts 
who are our bosses and our project leaders. So who are Green Belts? Green Belts are an integral members of Six Sigma project, uh, <clears throat> Six Sigma projects. Uh, we are high, highly skilled individual applying Six Sigma to, uh, in applying Six Sigma tools and techniques to identify and solve pro, uh, process related problems. We work on the super, on the supervision of a black belt and we can lead, lead small pro, small green belt projects are often interest, are often interested to us. And the kind of job uh, the the typical jobs for a green belt are in quality assurance and continue improvements. So why does being a green belt matter? Well, green belts are the bridge between project teams and leadership within our organization. The, our contributions are invaluable to the, to the success of the Six Sigma project, but we really matter because we do all, we are the working bees. We do all, most of the data collection and analysis in the green and the six and in, in the hierarchy. So, as I mentioned before, the first level, uh, the top level, the top level of the hierarchy is a master black belt. Master black belts are are the one who train the black belts. The only difference between a master black belt and a black belt is that the black the master black belt has two years experience on on six on six sigma projects uh, so being a leader is is, is experience so the, even black belts need need a master so a black belt then teaches then teaches the green belt uh, on the tools and principles to to process to process improvement, and the green belts finally teach the yellow belts. So the only one above the, ma the master black belt will be the project sponsor or the one or the one that <clears throat> or the one that pays for the project. So he reports only to him. Continuing on with the Six Sigma fundamentals, we, we want to discuss what is Six Sigma. Six Sigma is a data-driven methodology and a set of tools and techniques designed to improve process by minimizing defects to an exceptionally low level and enhance quality to near perfect performance. How does it does it? How does it do it? Well, it do it. It does it by systematically applying the Six Sigma principle in a structured approach. First, Six Sigma secret weapon is data and statistical analysis. We are data driven. Our decision making is data driven. We emphasize a deep understanding of the process. So you need to understand something before you can change it. Uh, we, the core philosophy of Six Sigma is continuous improvement. Uh, it, this motivates us to strive for perfection by reducing by an, uh, continuous improvement means that we always are monitoring the process and looking for ways to to make it better. And Six Sigma recognizes that process improvement often requires input and expertise from different areas. So we work with a multi with a diverse diversity of persons. So our teams our teams are not just a lot of chemists in one place. We are chemists, engineers, uh, project manager, uh, MB. Uh, we we work in a in a diversity of of in a diversity environment. 
because each person will have a specialty and could provide insight on stuff that you don't understand. OK, so what what are, what are the difference between the lean methodology and the Six Sigma methodology? Well, both focus on process improvement, but the lean methodology, <clears throat> the lean methodology is philosophy focus on analyzing each procedure with visual tools to create value by removing non-value added to the uh, of the procedure in in the efficiencies in the procedure. So lean focuses on on the efficiency of the procedure. Some to, some some examples are designing the best possible sequence to to do something. For example, if you want to get A to B, maybe a straight line is the better procedure, the better proce the better process than doing all of this. It seems it's a very easy, understandable uh, example, but basically we simplify steps how to get from point A from point from point A to point B with less steps or more efficient. So we minimize task, time, and effort. So lean, lean is cutting, cutting non non value added task. For example, you have so for example you have a you need to to look for glassware for your experiment, and the glassware is in the top shelf, and you need to go get a a a stool so so you can get the glassware. No, well, you reorganize and then you save time by not going to look for a stool. And over time, those little small, those little small steps aggregate and you end up saving at least an hour on the procedure. So if you do the procedure every day for the 365 days the year half, uh, you end up saving an hour an hour time 365. So that's 365 hours, non paid hours. So that's an example optimizing the layout space, just how I mentioned. Uh, and during my time in AdV, uh, I, I had a, one of my projects was to optimize the layout space for a new procedure that was, was, was uh, that's what was going to be implemented. So I use these two these tools to make that happen. And I end up reducing the procedure in the worst case scenario to an hour and 15 minutes per procedure. And first, first in, first out methodology, uh, an interesting, interesting story about this is that first in, first out is usually is usually used in every company, but the most notable is the it are breweries like the Cerveceria Puerto Rico uh, because el, eh, levadura eh, yeast yeast is an is a uh, it has a lifespan a very short lifespan so if you buy a lot of yeast it might it might get bad and you lose all the products related to that yeast. So first in, first out means you buy the product you need and get it out, then buy more. So this is a lean methodology. You you are not you are not making more than you need. Continue continuing to how we create value. Well, lean methodology create values here in the customer. The customer gets what the customer asks for. Uh, so nothing more nothing less you get what you pay for that's the lean methodology oops and how it how how does it create value by reducing waste what well, uh, in lean waste is this eight this eight uh this eight uh are defined as waste so first of I'm not gonna enter in very in detail about, about all this because Lean is gonna have its own video. So 
I'm just going to go through them. So first uh, ways is defects. Def uh, defects may be uh, like incorrect, incorrect information, uh, a tool that did, uh, uh, something that not went right in the in the process. Uh, transportation, uh, the, the more time you have to transport your product, the more time, the more waste you, you generate. Overproduction is the worst waste of them all. That's why I mentioned the first in, first out method. The invent, uh, inventory, inventory takes space and space, space is money. Waiting, obviously time is money too. Motion is the the unnecessary movement, like I said, like go get a stool to get to the top shelf to get the glassware. No, como que that's not that's not useful. That's not that's waste. And non -util non utilized talent is the eighth waste. Uh, that's when you have an overqualified person doing a, a simple job. That person could produce a lot more. Uh, extra processing, it means overworking, more working harder than you're supposed to to prove something or do something. <clears throat> so, both focus on process improvement. The, the, now let's see how Six Sigma does it. Six Sigma reduces defects to, to a Six Sigma level, meaning Six Sigma is 3.4 defects per million opportunities. Opportunities means like if you create a million pills, 3.4 will be defective. <clears throat> That's what opportunity means. It reduce is focus it is focused on reducing va va variability. It's not focused on reducing waste is focused on reducing variability. So do you remember in those analytical chemistry classes where they when they talk about precision and exact uh, exactitude? Well, this is its application. It uses data to reduce variability. If you remember variability is the square root of of the of the of the standard deviation. Consi and we provide consi consistent returns with better quality and improved standard deviation. So in summary, uh, a basic comparison of Lean and Six Sigma, well, the goals in Lean is to elim eliminate waste. In Six Sigma is to reduce variation in the process. Uh, the focus of Lean is the customer demands. The focus on Six Sigma are problem solving. <clears throat> the techniques and tools are visual. You, they are almost childlike. You create a, uh, you do arrows. You represent the process in a in a paper drawing, drawing, but they are very effective. And and the ten, and the technical tools of Six Sigma are mathematical and statistical. So lean saves operational costs. So you see you see more direct uh, costs from lean, and Six Sigma prevents the cost of poor quality. So if you were to to get to to choose one, uh, the cost of poor quality could mean the lives of people. So for example, cost of poor quality, uh, let's say you have a process where one in, in a thousand goes wrong. So that's not much, right? Well, depends on what you're talking. If you're talking on, on airplanes, on flights, Imagine one in a thousand flights going going down. That means at least once er, once or twice every day a plane will go down. In contrast, operation costs will not affect lives. Operation costs just mean the company safe costs. 
So Six Sigma is a very important tool, but it cannot, it cannot improve process speed, so it cannot enhance by much a company's return on investment. But the limitation of lean, it cannot bring a process under statistical control. One, one, one makes a process statistical and in control, the other improve the process, uh, the efficiency of the process. So now that we get that out of the way, uh, I want to talk to you about the, <clears throat> the DMAC methodology or technique. Well, it's a structure and six, uh, DMIC is a structure and systematic problem solving, solving met, uh, technique that Six Sigma uses for, for process improvement. The D stands for define the problem and the project scope. The M stands for measure current process performance. The A, analyze data to identify root causes or opportunities. The A, the A is for improve the process based on analysis. And the C, for control, for control the process under sustained improvement. So during today's presentation, we are going to deep uh, dive deep into the define phase. <clears throat> The define phase, you will need uh, the define phase. Its objective is to clearly define the problem, project scope, and objectives. By said, uh, the importance for this is that you set the, funda uh, the foundation for a successful project. By def uh, you need to define the problem and its impact on stakeholders. By formula uh, in this phase, you formulate the pro the project team and assign roles, and identify initial metrics for project success. Okay, we're gonna go through this because there are different tools to do this. So. Some of the tools to do to 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 do all that are the project charter, stakeholder analysis, high level process map, and voice of the customer. But for today's presentation, uh, we are focusing on Six Sigma. The only Six Sigma tool is the project charter. Oh. Other the other tools are lean lean uh, lean tools uh, lean methodology tools, so will be discussed on another video. So for the project charter, the project charter uh, is uh, has the project description, which in turn has a uh, has a uh, is composed of a business case. A problem statement, measurable goals, project scope, and deliver deliverables, resources, and budget. So the project, the, the business case, answer what benefits are to be expected. Here you sell your your project. You 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 sell what you are what you are trying to achieve. The problem statement. Uh, mention what problem it is to be solved. Uh, measurable goals, you need you need a, a good project charter. This is the the most important part. You need to have measurable goals. By measurable means that you can compare the initial state and the final state and see if you reach the metrics you you propose in the in the project charter the project scope is how it's going to be approached and what limitation does this project does this project charter have project description have and the delivery the deliverables resource and budget 
are what it means. So let's start with the business case and problem statement. So I mentioned I was doing a thesis on cleaning validation uh, in the for pharma uh, for the pharmaceutical industry. So my thesis is on on introducing a cleaning validation methodology, spectroscopy methodology. So it every project should have a title. In this case, is uh, I choose this title for this presentation. That's not the title of my project. Revolutionizing the cleaning validation in pharmaceuticals through next gen spectroscopy methodology. Uh, then you go to the business case. Well, the business case should, should answer uh, uh, what. <clears throat> Sorry, let me take a sip of water. In the business case, you sell what uh, your method, your project. So you need to you need to for a good example of a business case is this: the pharmaceutical industry commitment to product safety and quality demands a robust approach to cleaning validation. The current method, okay, you you're stating why this is important, the demand, and you're stating. The current methodologies for cooling validation, while established, suffer from inefficiency, high cost, and time-consuming processes. You're stating the problem with current, with current methodologies, and then you sell your project. This project aims to introduce a cutting-edge spectroscopy solution to revolutionize cleaning validation, ensuring compliance, reducing costs, and accelerating production timelines. And what your project might do for the company. So let's recap this. This is very important. So you you ask the what, the why is this important, the current state, and why your why your project is better. You're selling. You're creating a demand for something. So the problem statement. The problem statement should ask, what are you fixing? What are you fixing? Well, you're fixing that the pharmaceutical uh, sector grapples with the limitation of, of conventional cleaning uh, methodologies, specifically in multi-product facilities. So, uh, swap testing is commonly employed in labor-intensive, time-consuming, and prone to error. These projects seek to address these challenges by direct a rapid spectroscopy methodology that guarantees cleaning validation. So, in the business case, you have basically this, but you're not selling it. You're you're here being direct. There's a problem, and this aim to fix it. Uh, the problem statement, the the business case contains part of the problem statement, but not in detail. The problem statement then is done in detail. Usually, this is done within a within a, a, Word, a Microsoft Word one page. A page. So <clears throat> then you go to the project goal. Here is where you express uh, the current uh, the the what do you expect your your project to accomplish, but with measurable. In very important, it has to be measurable. If it is immeasurable, you're not giving, you're not doing a correct project project uh, charter. You can be lacking, you can be lacking on all of this, but if you have measurable goals, it's a real project because that's, o sea, you're you're saying there's a metric that can define your success. The project goal is the most important part of the project charter, and this is very useful for creating proposals or writing project. Uh, me, uh, pro project uh, metrics or updates. So, uh, continuing on with the project goal, uh, the central objective of this project is to introduce a novel spectroscopy methodology to the cleaning validation, effectively replacing the existing technique with some overreaching goals, being enhanced efficiency, minimize cost, reduce downtime, and improve accuracy. Okay. So this, pro this 
I, I put this one on purpose because it is in a good project goal. It's just saying stuff without measuring how is uh, without without measuring for how much is going to enhance efficiency, how much is gonna minimize cost, how much is gonna reduce the downtime, how much is gonna improve accuracy. So this is a bad project goal example. So let's see a good project goal example. Okay, so the same the same objective, which is a uh, and replacing repla introducing the spectroscopy methodology to the clean validation process effectively replacing them is the same goal but now with improvement target uh, improving cl cleaning validation time with this achieving a minimum of 30 percent so this this is very important because the 30 percent is saying okay i have an initial state and I'm gonna better by 30%. At the end of your project, you can measure and see if your project ha has that success or more. So another another uh, another example: cost saving, at least 25% reduction in direct and indirect costs from killing from killing validation processes. <laughs> and and uh, reduce downtime for clean validation for a 30%. The, 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 the measurable goal is stated by the percentage. You don't have to be specific. And remember, at the end, uh, during your, in your, this is the defining phase. You're defining what your project is about and what it wants to achieve. Uh, you don't have data yet to, to back it up completely. So you need to you you can change your project your your you can change these metrics you can change and change them as you as you go on. There's nothing wrong with gathering data and making an informed decision. That's what we do, but we're selling it like this. Remember, we're selling your project so you your project gets done. By this phase, you're defining a problem and you're giving your your you're giving it to your boss, for example, and you want to do a project to better it, to better it, or you're making a proposal, uh, a grad a grad student proposal. We do it all the time. So you need to establish clear metrics of what you want to achieve. And the project scope, the project scope. Uh, tells you how you're gonna achieve it and what limitation does this project have on uh, how many uh, so how the limitations this the scope of this project encompass the development validation and integration of the of the spectro of the spectroscopic methodology so you want to introduce the methodology to the clean validation process that that's the objective this include method optimization, data analysis, and comparative studies. It also involves training personnel and ensuring compliance with regulatory re requirements. Anything beyond that is out of the project scope. Ah, you wanna, so you wanna compare it to, so you wanna compare it to the current method. Yes, it is within, within the scope. So you wanna see if it works for another, for another, uh, if the technology works not for clean validation, it's not for uh, within the scope. You don't have to do that, and it's not expected of you to do that. The more you define your scope, uh, the more protected you will be. So another example is the time frame for this project is three to six months. You're you're saying within three to six months you are you're going to finish your project. You're giving a timeline and you always have to give a timeline for your project. And finally, you go with the, fin uh, the financial impact that is are associated with your project. So you're, you're going to list all the hard saving and soft saving, which will be discussed later on the improve phase, because on the improve phase, you you want to show your before and afters uh, before and after the procedure 
So I'm gonna uh, save this part for later. And I'm gonna go to the financial impact. Usually this is in the form of a spread on a, an Excel spreadsheet, but each each uh, each company or each project has its own requisite for, uh, requ requisites for this. Uh, for my project, the total cost associated with implementation is in the range of 101,200 uh, 101, and 123,700,000. And why is that? Because the cost of new equipment like the chemical printer scanner is 39,000. The handheld IR system is 37,000, which sums up to 77,000 rounded up. And the software and installation costs are almost 2,000. And, and resource and contract solving, being me, a green belt especially, I wish I 85,000 a year. But remember, I'm not going to work all year. I'm going to work within three to six months because I stated that I stated that on my project scope. The, the project can take more time than that. And, and it's okay. It can take less time and it's okay. But usually you stay the time you are gonna work with and you get a contract for that time. Uh, most companies uh, hire between the three to six month range just because they have a project they want to get done, and that's the time frame. Usually, if you do it do, during your time frame, you got you got a you get a review, and stating that you you complete you you pass your you completed your metrics, and did a good service, etc. So, continuing on, let's recap the benefits of the define phase. It aligns the project goals with the organizational objectives. So your objective should be in line with the with the organization paying you. The objective of the project should be in line with the organization uh, objectives. The, o sea, usually, usually, uh, this will this will be online because you, your your mindset is on being lean, being lean while maintaining accuracy and and perfection. So it reduces ambiguity and sets clear expectations. Sets clear expectations. This is very important. That's the limitations and the project scope. Also, the measurable goals. The project is expecting to obtain a 30% reduction. 30%. You, the company will be expect, expecting 30%. If you deliver more, good. If you deliver less, maybe you get uh, a bad review or something, but you'll even you better the, the company's process in the in the procedure. So and ensure everybody is on the same thing, on the same thing page. So continuing, um, now doing the last part of the presentation, I want to mention the future presentation that will be upcoming. Uh, for today, we discussed the define phase of the DMAC methodology. And in, in October 5, we will cover the measure and analyze phase of the DMAC methodology. And in November 2, we will cover the improve and control. And lastly, the lean methodology we will cover on December 7. Uh, one metal one, uh, one presentation for month per month uh, during the during this semester. And let's let's wrap up this presentation with uh, a conclusion. Uh, today we explore, explore the fundamentals of Six Sigma and its role and its role on enhanced project. We learned the difference between Lean and Six Sigma and introduced the DMIC structure approach and, and we deep dive with we, we dive in the defined phase on the project charter on the project charter. We we mentioned what are good 
project, uh, what, what are good measurable goals? What is a good project scope? What is a good uh, business case and a good problem statement? So stay tuned for our next webinar that we will focus on the measure analysis, analyze phase of the DMIC methodology and we will dive into data collection analysis and root cause identification. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, here's my contact info. Any questions that I may answer to today? <laughs>